Hello everyone, James here, and this week we'll be talking about liquid watercolours. Huge thanks to my patrons for voting on the topic this week, and next week I'll be following up with a tutorial about my essential art supplies for watercolour. I was initially sort of a bit sceptical about these paints. I bought them a little while ago, and I didn't try them for ages. I did a few swatches, but I just wasn't really kind of into them, and I thought, oh, this is going to take a little bit of work to get used to. But actually, they kind of bridge the gap between watercolour and ink. They are made with pigments, they're not made with dyes, but they definitely behave like ink. I mean, you can see in this clip already how much they flow just by touching a little bit of water to them. Now, that would never happen with watercolour even from a tube. And to get the intensity in that smaller dot that I'm putting down on the paper, I don't think would be really realistic with traditional watercolours either. So... You know, when I started making this video, I became quite intrigued about how they were going to work. I was a little bit disappointed by the white, which you've just seen there. That was, you know, not as opaque as I thought it would be. But apparently it's just used to make the colours in the set a little bit more opaque and pastel, but not hugely. It's not intended to be used in the way that white in a gouache set would be. Um, oh my god, I said gouache, not gouache. <laughs> I know a bunch of people that are going to be really happy that I pronounced that in inverted commas correctly. <laughs> but I think as most of you know, I'm not great with colour, as in it kind of freaks me out a bit. Um, I get a bit nervous about it and, you know, making the wrong choices and all of that. And using multiple colours, I get, you know, particularly stressed about. I mean, stressed. It's not really stress, is it? So yeah, I chose two colours. They were ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta. And I basically want to create this really soft gradient across a guy's face um, and use different mixtures at different ends of the spectrum to create shadows and values. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. A quick little update for everyone. I have some really exciting news. I was chosen to be brand ambassador for Betty Hayways, who are an independent UK brush maker and they're gorgeous as you can see from the rainbow ferrule but they also perform really really well but one thing I need to say is that I'm not saying this because I'm a brand ambassador I applied to be brand ambassador because I love their brushes I bought a set about a year ago myself after seeing the animated life on Instagram I posted them in her stories and to be honest I bought them for the colour <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm not going to like lie about that. I was like, they are so pretty. And she said that they worked really well. So I was like, okay, you know, let's try these out. And they really quickly became my favourite brushes. In fact, I think there are very few paintings that I haven't made with them over the last year and a bit. With that in mind, because I'm talking about them, this is technically a sponsored post. And if you like the look of them and you're thinking about getting them, I have an affiliate link in the description of this video. Um, you won't be charged anymore, but I do earn a small commission from it, so it would really help the channel out if you were interested in getting some new brushes. So you could see a little bit back there of the sort of struggles of doing the wash. Now, normally when I do a wash, I struggle with back runs, and that's not what I struggled with with these. They tend not to produce back runs very easily. There is a little one across his hairline, which you can still see now. But they flow really, really well. And I think the thing that I struggled with was the intensity of the colour. I over-egged it a bit, trying to make them too pale. And I was trying to charge in with a solution that wasn't strong enough. So therefore, it was kind of um, washing out the wash, if that makes any sense. So while I was painting this, I was really kind of getting used to the paints, which was really interesting. It was a quick learning curve, but... Um, but yeah, I said before that they don't behave like watercolour. They really don't. And they don't flow in the same way that um, core watercolours flow either. They're just completely different. Um, like I said, they, they do really behave like ink and in the way they layer up as well. So I find with ink that if I use the same solution and paint it down as a wash over his face, for example, and then I use that same solution to build up values, it doesn't really do much. Um, I don't really know why, so if anybody does know why ink doesn't layer in that same way as watercolours do, 
then let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear why. Um, but watercolour does behave like that. Now, these don't. So that's another reason why they behave a lot like ink. So I was having to play around with the saturation of the mixtures a lot and the hue of the mixtures a lot. So it was a really interesting learning curve. And I actually had a lot of fun. I mean, yes, he's purple and blue and pink. But <laughs> aside from that, I actually had a lot of fun for a change in a way. That doesn't mean I don't have fun when I'm making my art. I do all the time. But this was just particularly playful. And I wasn't just doing, you know, the same colour palette that I normally do. It was quite exciting. Now, the other thing about these paints is they sort of dry a bit granulated. You can see on the palette here that they kind of speckle. It's like the pigment's broken apart. That doesn't really happen with watercolours unless it's a granulating colour because I guess the pigments are evenly suspended in the binder. And I don't know what it is about these, but they tend to crackle and flake when they're dried on a palette. And you see a little bit of that on the paper, but it's nowhere near as obvious as when it's on the palette. And I found that quite interesting too, because with normal watercolours, it's hard to get a texture sometimes just from a flat wash. And these were almost kind of giving me that texture as I was painting, which was great. I really, really enjoyed that side of these paints. And once I got used to the issue with layering, and I was so used to increasing the saturation of the, of the mixtures, then the layers started to really build up. But you can even see in the transition there of that clip where I was laying down the wet paint on his nose, that dried significantly paler, still highly coloured, but significantly paler than when it went down wet. So I think that perfectly illustrates what I'm talking about with these not layering up in the same way that traditional watercolour paints do. It's not a huge thing to get used to, but it's just something to be mindful of if this was something that you were thinking about getting for your own art. At this stage, most of the values are down in his face. I've got a couple of details to put in, but I was thinking about putting the night sky in his hair and I wanted to try using masking fluid. I was really interested to see whether it would block the liquid and actually it really didn't but the paints flow so well that it almost went under the masking fluid. It didn't form a barrier on the paper, which was a little bit disappointing. So I don't know whether that needs a little bit more experimentation or whether it just doesn't work with masking fluid. I'm not sure, but I'll definitely be using these paints again. So I'll be able to do a little bit more experimentation with some sort of less frequently used techniques like masking fluid, I want to play with iridescent mediums as well because the colours are so bright and so vibrant with these paints that I think they'll react really well with that. So keep an eye out on that for the future. And yeah, I said these paints were vibrant. They really are. I said last week in my Sennelier video that Sennelier paints dry a lot more vibrant than most other watercolours. Well, these are like in a league of their own. They stay really bright once dry. If I was mixing this mixture with my Winsor & Newton Professional series, it would look like this when it was wet and then it would dull quite significantly compared to these. So if anybody's looking for a really almost electric colour palette, then these are definitely paints worth considering. I can actually see myself doing underpaintings with these in the future, just to try and get that kick of vibrancy into my artwork much earlier on. The one thing I was a little bit disappointed with, no surprises here, I think you probably all said it before I even say it, is that there's no Payne's Grey in the set. But they do have another set, and I think it's included in that one. Um, <laughs> But that, I mean, that colour is really easy to make with the black and the ultramarine blue that come in the set. I know that's not the traditional way to make Payne's Grey, but it is a, quite a common way of most modern paint makers now. So there's a lot that you can do with the colours in this set, for sure. 
And then I haven't really talked about the painting much. I've kind of talked about the paints a lot. I normally try and get a good balance of that, but I had a lot to say about these paints. So I'm kind of pleased with that. Sometimes when I'm reviewing a product, I find it a bit of a struggle to, to know what to say. Just because, you know, sometimes watercolours are just watercolours. You know, there's not a huge amount to say about them. But these are so unique and really quite special. I hope I've given you a really decent insight into what these paints are like to paint with. I certainly had a lot of fun, which I think I've hammered on about quite a lot, <laughs> and was really impressed with the quality. Um, I'd heard that they weren't light fast, but actually on Jackson's website and on the London Graphic Design Centre, which is a big art store, they say that the light fastness is excellent. So I'll need to do a couple of trials with that because if I'm ever to sell any paintings made with these watercolours, I want to make sure that they're going to stand the test of time. But yeah, I keep trying to sign off and then I keep thinking of things that I want to say. <laughs> But I think that really is it from me today. Um, before I go, I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are keeping the lights turned on and I love making content for you. So if anybody watching this video would like to learn how I do things, there are exclusive tutorials over on my Patreon page, as well as tons of behind the scenes content as well. So head over to patreon.com forward slash finelinernerd to find out more. And to everyone that watched this video and gives me those thumbs up and subscribes, you keep me making videos and I love you for it. So thank you so much. And I will see you again next week. Bye.